Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Jack, the muscle and mobility maker with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, we're gonna to be showing you how to fix your IT band syndrome. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. And it doesn't get better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this one. All right, like I said, today we're gonna to be showing you how to fix your IT band syndrome. But before we really dive into it, there's some important things to understand about IT band syndrome. First of all, it's the understanding that it is a systematic breakdown of your leg. The function of your leg is failing you. And often this begins from the foot. So things we can look for at the foot that would really indicate the driving factor of our IT band syndrome would be foot turnout, collapsing of the arch, even bunions, or anything where the ankle is pronating inward and caving and collapsing the leg from the very foundation of your body upward. Now, it's also important to keep in mind that your hip function is highly important in IT band syndrome as well and could be playing a role in that overall collapse of your leg. So the other way that we look at this is if the hip is missing range of motion and stability or control, and when you take steps, that knee wants to cave inward toward your midline, that is also a clear indicator that we have a systematic problem from the foot and the hip, usually working together in that, that they are both failing you and letting you down in some way, shape or form and that's where we need to address it. So you're gonna see some foot work here, you're gonna see some hip work, and we're gonna work the whole system of the leg all together to help restore it. Now there is one other case I'll mention here that's important to keep in mind, and that is if you have a history of injury to your lower spine. If you have a history of injury to the lower spine where that is affecting the nerves that uh, directly connect into the musculature of the hip, such as the IT band or the glutes, and those are chronically tightened due to that impingement of the nerve or the damage to the nerve, then that could be something that is negatively impacting your IT band and that is a symptom you're receiving. So if you have a history of back injury, keep that in mind. And I did do a video on that previously, so I'll post that here. But also, even if you do not have a history of injury to your lower back or spine there, you should also keep in mind your injury history to your legs. So if you've injured your toes, your ankles, if you had injuries to the knees or the hip directly, any of that could be part of the driving factor in your IT band syndrome symptom that you're receiving now. And that's how we have to look at it. This is just a symptom of an overall bigger problem at hand. So. Keep those things in mind. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to address it if you do not have a history of lower back pain and your low back's not a factor. And simply, if you have a history of injury to your legs, we'll be good to go there. And this will take care of it and help you correct that. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, as I said, the first thing we're gonna to start to restore is the function of your foot. And we wanna start with an interlace of the fingers with the opposite toes here. What we're doing is a little bit of a crush, a little hug of the hand and the foot. So we want the toes to squeeze the fingers and the fingers to kind of squeeze into the webbing of your toes there. Our goal is to get as deeply interlaced as possible. So what I'm doing here is flexing for five to 10 seconds. And then I wanna release and relax and get a little bit deeper in between those toes. This is one you could pretty much do anywhere and a lot of this foot stuff is uh, something you can do as long as you're barefoot and you know sitting watching TV, whatever. Next, we're gonna wring the foot out. Our foot is designed to have rotational capacity. So keeping that interlace, what I want the forefoot to do is rotate with me. So I'm trying to touch the back of the foot to the floor as I rotate back up from there. And I'm just restoring that motion. From here, we're gonna go individualization of extension. So the big toe extended, the small toe extends, and then we're gonna alternate those toes. So big toe, small toes, big toe, small toes. Now you can do this half kneeling like I am, you could do it seated, you could do it from a standing position and play with these different stimuli. And either way, just get it in so that you're working the strength of the foot. From there, we're gonna expand it out to a cat claw. So we wanna reach those toes out as far as we can, drag it back. Everything we're doing here is to restore the natural arch of the foot and natural function of the foot so that it's able to create a stable base for you to work from. 
So keep cat clawing. You can play with these motions for two to five minutes at a time. Really, it's kind of at your leisure to decide what is challenging for the beat. And from there, just play with it regularly so that you can restore that function. Going to a vertical stance here, we're gonna do a little bit of a splay. So I want to pin my first toe and then I'm gonna fan my smaller toes out from there. Pin the first toe, fan out from there using rotation. So watch the rotation of my legs. That's what's causing my toes to fan. My big toe is staying pinned. My smaller toes are reaching out further and there will be some rotation at the knee and hip that is causing that. Now, lastly, what we're gonna do is check tibial rotation here. We wanna make sure that your tibia is rotating the way that it should. So lock your ankle in dorsiflexion, and you can see just below my knee a point that moves side to side, wagging as I wag my foot here. That's what we want to see, and I'm pointing right to that spot right now, touching it as I rotate my tibia. If your tibia is internally rotated or lacking that rotation, you're going to have a struggle to get the foot in the right position. So this is important to address. Looking at ankle function a little bit, we wanna make sure that your ankle is not collapsing. So it can help to have a one by four or some type of board to stand on and placing the big toe and second toe off the board while the rest of the toes are on and the heel is on. You'll watch my knee rotate and lift the foot up. That is the action we want. As I externally rotate the hip, my knee rotates open and my foot gets pulled into a normal position. So this is where I would have an arch. We wanna make sure you have that strength as well here. Next, we're gonna address some banded work here at different joints. So starting at the ankle, we wanna address ankle dorsiflexion, okay? So we need a bench, we need that band anchored low on a post, and we're putting it right at the crease of the ankle and we're driving the knees over the toes. Now I want to drive up through my big toe and second toe, coming into a full extension, and then I'm gonna settle back in, allowing that to go a little bit deeper into that dorsiflex position. Five seconds on that drive up, strengthening the foot even against the band here, and then improving that dorsiflexion. The alignment of my knee should be with the middle toe or smaller toes as I'm externally rotating the hip a little bit here in this dorsiflex position. And that's a one position we want to restore overall to make sure that your hip is functioning correctly and not collapsing. Once again, that external rotation is important. From here, we're gonna move the band up to hip height and step into it, placing the banded leg to the back. I'm focusing on getting my pelvis in a neutral position. So I'm going from anterior pelvic tilt to a posterior pelvic tilt and engaging my glutes at first. Then I'm gonna do just some flexing of the glutes while I'm in posterior pelvic tilt against the band there. You can kind of see that engaging, disengaging, and I'm gonna do those flexes. The reason I wanna improve my hip extension is because if I am in anterior pelvic tilt, this is automatically going to force my system of my leg into that internally rotated and collapsed position, putting more stress on the outer portion of my leg in the glutes there and the TFL, tensor fascia latte, on the outside of the leg, which both connect right into that IT band specifically. Still working with the band here, we're gonna take ourselves into deeper flexion now. First of all, I wanna test the upper arch of my hip range of motion just by pulling it into a deep flexion and rotating it through internal and external rotation while that band is pulling at my hip to help with the capsule. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and interlace my fingers on the back of the knee and kick the leg out. Here we're working on a little bit of hamstring flexibility, but also flossing the nerve through the back of the leg at the same time to make sure we have full range of motion. And there's nothing addressing or pulling at the pelvis from the back there as well, keeping things balanced. Next, active internal rotation while the band is still at the hip. We want to open up the leg, reaching the small toe for the outside of the shin and rotate that hip internally in the socket. So it is a challenging position. You might feel a little bit of cramping trying to happen at the hip. Do not shy away from that cramping. Actually flex deeper into it as you feel it trying to do so and you will regain control over that position. 
From there, we're gonna keep that band on the hip, having it pull perpendicular across the body there. And we're going to open up into internal and external rotation, pushing the knee in and keeping that foot planted the whole time. That's an important key. We want that foot to be planted in both directions as we internally and externally rotate the hip through that pool. The last position we're gonna go into is external rotation of the hip. I have my fingers interlaced, my hand on the outside of the knee. My leg is reaching back behind me and pushing off that post. So I'm at fully extended reaching that leg behind. And I wanna activate my glutes and hip flexors against the floor for a second there. And then I'm gonna relax and let the band take me a little bit deeper each time I relax into that stretch. From here, we're gonna to start to address some of the soft tissues. So I do wanna take a soft ball or some type of firm ball to massage my glutes and my TFL. That TFL is right by my hip pocket there. You could see me kind of hitting that range. Now the TFL works in a few ways, but we wanna make sure that we're getting the leg through a bent knee position and a straight leg position. While there's pressure on those tissues, we wanna roll across that pocket and we wanna internally and externally rotate. Basically play with any positions where there's points of tenderness to the pressure of that ball and or you're feeling like there's resistance to the pressure. So allow yourself to actually settle that ball in as deep as possible. It can help to flex and relax into the pressure. So letting the ball go deeper after you have flexed against it, but work the tissues, give it about two minutes and also getting the glutes as well. So working behind the hip and just play with that range. Next, we're gonna address tight adductors. If those adductors are pulling your hip into internal rotation because they are chronically tightened, this is gonna be one of the best ways we can open those up. So you want your butt in the corner of a room, your back against the wall, you need some plates here or dumbbells or whatever you have access to that has some weight. These are 35 pound kettlebells. We're gonna put the base of our feet together, the soles of our feet together so that they're touching and we have them pulled in as much as possible in that butterfly position. And then we're gonna put that load on the inside of the knees from there. What you wanna do is flex up against the load, also against the resistance of your arm. So I'm actively pushing down against myself for five to 10 seconds, and then I'm gonna relax and allow myself to open up deeper. It may take a few reps to get that to start to open deeper and deeper, but spend a minimum of two minutes here. From here, we're gonna to start to re-strengthen and stabilize the leg around the hip, starting with the 90-90 sit position. So both legs are bent to 90 degrees at the knee, one leg out front, one leg to the back. And I'm starting with just some leans over that front leg. Again, I have my fingers interlaced to start, hand on the knee. As you feel more confident in this position and you can sit in a better, a more upright positioning, then you can take those hands out and lean over without any assistance keeping yourself reaching long, thinking of reaching your belly button for your calf or your chest beyond the leg there as much as possible. Still working from the 90-90, we're gonna work hip internal rotation. The goal is to lift that back foot off the floor. Again, this one will try and make you cramp, flex into that cramp as much as you're able to again. That is your TFL working. We wanna strengthen that TFL up and make sure that it is moving the way that it should and has the control that it should over internal rotation here. So interlace toes, hands on the knee, slight lean forward, it's okay, and lift the leg from there. All right, last one from this position, we're going to shin box up. So we want to be able to drive our hips up, coming up tall, using the glutes to extend the hips, and then controlling the lower back down, making sure that it's a nice smooth movement, taking as much range at the top as possible. From there, as you get stronger, you can actually elevate this into what I call an elevated pigeon lunge. What you want is your shin parallel to the bench there. At the edge of the bench, you're going to step back so you have some of a lunge. The knee will drop straight down. You're flexing the glutes, which is 
awesome for opening up range of motion at the hip as well, allowing yourself to settle deeper into that stretch after that flex and engaging again. So we're building strength, but also opening range of motion at the same time in this external rotation of the hip up front. Still working to build up that stability of the leg here. I have a band pulling me into the center of the post here. I wanna make sure that I'm resisting that as I tuck my tailbone and open the knee toward my small toes. That's the movement we want. So the knee opens, my tailbone tucks, my glutes are engaged, and we're reaching out, keeping the knee in line with those smaller toes as far as you're able to without losing the contact of your foot. We let that band pull us back in into internal rotation. It's okay if your back goes into a little bit of an arch there as you internally rotate, that's natural. And then pulling back out, we're just playing with natural movement of your pelvis and hip here to create stability of the leg and just keeping conscious awareness of what's going on at the foot at the same time. And lastly, a double banded squat hold. Here we're gonna really activate the glutes and make sure they're doing the job that they should so that the TFL is not carrying any extra load that it should not be. So I have a band around the ankle that I've interlaced between my toes. This is to help cue the proper foot function. You can see that nice splay of my toes naturally. And then I have one just above the knees and you can see that nice quiver at my knees trying to keep that band driving wide feeling my glutes activating to hold that position quite a bit for 60 seconds. All right, and there you have it, a mobility-based approach to help you restore your leg and overall fix your IT band syndrome that you've been struggling with. If you like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend who you know struggles with IT band syndrome or simple leg issues where the caving of the knee is collapsing. That could be beneficial in their way, even if they're not seeing IT band syndrome just yet. So this will help them resolve that as well. If you are someone who struggled with this for a while and you prefer to have more direct guidance and help in resolving it, then what I want you to do right now is drop down below in the description to fill out a coaching application and schedule a time for your Mobility Blueprint call. Mobility Blueprint call is our opportunity to jump on a Zoom call so that I can visually assess any missing mobility and overall movement that you need help with. From there, I'm able to tailor a program specifically to your needs from what we find and discuss on the call. And overall, give you a program that will specifically get to the root cause of what's driving your IT band syndrome or any other issues that you'd like to address as well if you have other training aches and injuries that are keeping you from training the way that you'd like, being at your strongest and overall functioning pain-free. So if that sounds good, what I want you to do is drop down in the description right now, fill out that coaching application, get that call scheduled, and we'll go ahead and have that conversation to get you started and answer any other questions that you might have on that call as well. Last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. It does not get better than that. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. We'll see you next week.